Hello, in this video, we will be discussing the relationships between the cost concepts. So the first relationship we'll be looking at is the relationship between the ATC and AVC and how it relates to the AFC. So the relationship between the average total cost and the average variable cost and how it relates to the average fixed cost. As we can see on the graph on the right, we can see that we have the marginal cost curve the average total cost curve, the average variable cost curve, but we don't have the average fixed cost curve. So usually in most cost diagrams, we don't draw the average fixed cost. That is because of what we know from the calculation of the average fixed cost. We know that the average fixed cost equals the average total cost minus the average variable cost. So this means at each level of quantity, at each level of output, the average fixed cost equals the average total cost minus the average variable cost. So this is why we don't draw the average fixed cost. So usually the average fixed cost, we should have something like this. So which means at each level of quantity, this is the height of the average fixed cost at each level of quantity. But usually we don't draw the average fixed cost because we expect that the distance between the average total cost and the average variable cost at each level of output should be exactly equal to the average fixed cost. So this shaded area between the average total cost and the average variable cost at each level of output we expect it to give us the exact value of the average fixed cost if we apply this formula of average fixed cost equals average total cost minus average variable cost. Hence, this is why most cost graphs do not draw the average fixed cost because the gap can be seen without drawing it. What we are trying to say is that let's say at this level of quantity, let's call it Q1, if the average fixed cost at this level of Q1, at this level of quantity 1, this is our average fixed cost. At this same level of Q1, this is the average variable cost. And at this same level of Q1, this is the average total cost. So this means if this point is the average total cost and this point is the average variable cost, then the distance between the two has to be the average fixed cost, which means the value of the average total cost minus the value of the average variable cost will give us the average fixed cost, which is why we don't need to show this gap here since the gap is already shown at this point here. Hence why we don't usually draw the average fixed cost because the value of the average fixed cost is hidden at each level of output as the gap between the average total cost and the average variable cost. The next relationship we'll be looking at is the relationship between the marginal cost and the average total cost. The first relationship is that when the average total cost is decreasing, we expect the marginal cost to be less than the average total cost at each level of output. So at each level of output, if the average total cost is decreasing, then we expect the marginal cost to be below the average total cost or we can say the marginal cost is less than the average total cost. So let's take this quantity here. Let's call it Q1. This is the value of the marginal cost at Q1. And this is the value of the average total cost at Q1. This point here.
so as the quantity increases from q1 to let's say q2 this is the value of the marginal cost And this is the value of the average total cost. So we can see that as the average total cost is decreasing, the marginal cost is still below the average total cost, which means the value of ATC1 is greater than the value of MC1, and the value of ATC2 is greater than the value of MC2. We can also see this directly from the graph. This is the decreasing portion of the ATC. So at each level of output corresponding to this decreasing portion of the average total cost, we can see that each corresponding value of the marginal cost at each level of output is less than the average total cost value. So we can see that the marginal cost is below the average total cost when the average total cost is decreasing. However, when we go to the increasing portion of the average total cost at each level of output, we will notice that the corresponding marginal cost is above the average total cost, which means when ATC is increasing, the marginal cost is greater than the average total cost at each level of outputs. So at each level of output, if the average total cost is increasing, then the marginal cost is above the average total cost or the marginal cost is greater than the average total cost. So let's take this quantity here. Let's call it Q1. The corresponding marginal cost is around here and the corresponding average total cost is around here so we can see that at this q1 the value of the marginal cost is greater than the value of the average total cost if we pick another point let's call this q2 we can see that the value of the marginal cost is greater than the value of the average total cost at this point also the third relationship is simply that when the ATC is at the minimum, we expect the marginal cost to cut the ATC at the minimum. So usually the marginal cost curve cuts or intersects the average total cost curve at the minimum of the average total cost. The decreasing portion, the marginal cost is below the average total cost when the average total cost is decreasing but when the average total cost is increasing the marginal cost is above the average total cost so which means the equality happens at the point where the average total cost is at minimum so when atc is at minimum the marginal cost is equal to the average total cost and this point is referred to as the break even point which means break even means zero economic profit which means at this point let's call it point a the firm will make zero economic profit and that point is called the break even point the corresponding quantity to this point let's call it q star the corresponding quantity to this point is called the efficiency scale. All that we've learned about the relationship between marginal cost and average total cost is exactly the same as the relationship between marginal cost and average variable cost, except for this last part here, the break-even point and the efficiency scale point. So relationship between marginal cost and average variable cost. So at each level of output, if the average variable cost is decreasing, then the marginal cost is below the average variable cost. 
or the marginal cost is less than the average variable cost. So when the average variable cost is decreasing, the marginal cost is below the average variable cost at each level of outputs. Let's take this quantity for an example. This is the marginal cost at this quantity. And this is the average variable cost for this quantity. If this is another quantity, this is the marginal cost. And this is the average variable cost. So we can see that as average variable cost is decreasing and quantity increases, the marginal cost is still below the average variable cost. Next, at each level of output, if the average variable cost is increasing, then the marginal cost is above the average variable cost or the marginal cost is greater than the average variable cost. So when average variable cost is increasing, the marginal cost is above the average variable cost, which is the opposite of the first relationship. Next, when the average variable cost is at minimum, the marginal cost cuts the average variable cost at this point, which means the marginal cost is equal to the average variable cost, which is this point here. Let's call it point B. So when we add point B, which is the minimum because average variable cost is decreasing, then it starts to increase. So the point between the decreasing and the increasing is the minimum point. At this minimum point, which is point B, the marginal cost is exactly equal to the value of the average variable cost. So this point is called the shutdown point, which means the firm is indifferent about production. So this means that either if the firm shuts down at this point or they keep producing at this point, the level of loss that they are making will still be the same. So the shutdown point is an indifference point, or usually the shutdown point is the point where the firm starts considering to close down the business temporarily in the short run. And the corresponding output at the shutdown point, let's call it QS, the corresponding output at this shutdown point is called the shutdown output. So the shutdown output can either be the value of this QS or the shutdown output can be zero. Like I said, the shutdown point is an indifferent point about production where the firm starts to consider whether to close down temporarily in the short run or to keep producing the shutdown output. And this explains the simple relationship between the cost concepts. Thank you very much for watching. See you in another video.